Welcome into Conversations with Paul Brown. Our guest this morning is Emmanuel Donaldson, and he has begun a new effort to help folks in the Anderson community. It's called Tackling the Streets. Yes. And he's going to give us his story and what they're trying to do. And in fact, next week, they're going to have a camp at the Civic Center, and he's going to tell us all about that. First of all, you grew up not far from here, just down the country in Anterville. What do you remember about those days? Antreville was a fun place. Growing up in Antreville is was like no other place. Everybody knew each other, and it was a country setting, yep. and like it still is now. Uh, matter of fact, me and my brothers was the last to uh, pick cotton uh, in the community. Where did you gin it? Well, r not far from where we picked that, it was a, a place called the Antreville Gin. Uh, right there, uh, two miles, within a two miles radius uh, from all the cotton fields. Your parents and grandparents sharecropped? Yes. yes. For those that may not know what we're talking about, explain what sharecropping was. Well, sharecropping is, uh, uh, this family would grow this uh, thing part of the uh, crops and uh, another family may grow something else and they would trade off and share what they had uh, and the other family would sh share what they had. Uh, some would have fat back, <laughs> some would have molasses <laughs> and so what you didn't have your neighbors would have so whatever you cropped and grow you know they shared that. Right. You picked cotton by hand? Yes. What was that like because it wasn't an easy task? Well, uh, to me it was fun because uh, we was going to get a quarter on Saturday. That quarter went a long way. Yeah. I mean, we, we got we bought several items. We could go up to the store and, and we'd get a honey bun, a, a, <laughs> a soda, <laughs> yeah. ice cream, and some pin and pinwheel cookies, all for a quarter. When it came time to go to high school, where did you all go in Antreville? Went to Dixie High School in Duets. Small school? Small school. Mostly rural kids? Mostly rural kids. And again, everybody knew everybody? Everybody knew everybody. You played a little football? Played a lot of football. Tell me about Four that. Four-year letterman. Started out uh, in the eighth grade, and uh, I was gifted at Tapton. I was pulled up to the varsity uh, the last couple of uh, games to sit with them, and I did get in, but from the ninth grade through the 12th, I started and lettered. We was conference champions all four years. What Went position did you play? I played guard and tackle, ended up with on tackle, offense and defense. Yeah. <laughs> to come out of the game, because we only had a small team, you had to fake a cramp. <laughs> Act like you had a cramp in your leg just to get out of the game. So you were all that good for four years? Yes, sir. I mean, it, and uh, what was it like bringing that championship back the first year? It was very fun and, and, and exciting because uh, it was an accomplishment that hadn't been accomplished there in a long right. time. And for my team and my uh, teammates to win it four years in a, walk, in a row, uh, it was very, very exciting. And, and we all went to the end uh, as being upper state champions uh, my senior year. Yeah. You finished Dixie High School, then what do you do? Well, I went on to Tri-County Tech in Erskine College for some short period of time. Um, did some theological studies and uh, some uh, extra training. Uh, got my CDLs at Tri-County and just started working. I uh, went to Orange Corn and worked there 10 years swinging shift. Wow. Uh, I was a single parent for a while, so that put a, took a toll on yeah. me. So, after I put my 10 years in for retirement, then I, you know, had to branch out to do something where I could be there with my kids uh, from Monday through Friday, as well as the weekend from being away from them so much. And then you got a job in downtown Anderson. Yes. <laughs> yes. Then I got a job in downtown Anderson. Uh, I was working with the city for a while, and uh, I was started out on, on, uh, on the road maintenance side with uh, street jobs, cleaning up on that area and driving truck and then I transferred over to the to the jail side, city police department where I was over the prisoners for a while taking them out on work detail and then I transferred back to the state road maintenance in, uh, in Abbeville. 
When you were at the city uh, working the prisoners, who was the police chief? Daryl Kong. Okay. Yeah. For those that may not know what we're talking about, you had, they were basically nonviolent type people who were doing time. Very much so. And rather than have them in the jail cells, what would you do? We'd take them out, uh, clean the streets up on the city, uh, as far as uh, that area. And then we would go uh, a little bit away from the police department and pick up trash, mm -hmm. cut debris back, uh, kept the police cars washed up, and and of, of that nature. Did anybody ever try to run on you? No, I didn't have any to try to run. Uh, I did have one to uh, cut his finger off one day. <laughs> he got hold of the, the, the shears from the trim hedges and cut his finger off. Uh, he did it on purpose thinking he was going to get a, a settlement from the city. I don't know what happened on that end. But, but he lost a finger. He lost a finger. <laughs> Scared me half to death. After you left the the, uh, the highway department at Abbeville, then what happened? Well, I was injured. I was working uh, with the highway department and uh, getting ready to leave the, the yard that morning. And I stepped up to check on my truck. And it was a step that was welded. The weld broke on the step and I fell down on my right knee and it jarred the disc in my lower back and therefore put me on total disability. I could not walk for 12 to 13 years, and I ended up in a wheelchair to the point to where they didn't think I was gonna walk again. What happened? Well, uh, when I went down on my knee, the three discs above my tailbone got shifted to the side, and it had a nerve trap, and I was in excruciating pain, and it just locked me down. I went from a walker to forearm crutches, and it finally just put me in a wheelchair. But you aren't in a wheelchair now. No, by the grace of God. What happened? Uh, well, through prayer, God healed me, and uh, I still have to take uh, pain medication uh, to endure the pain on a daily basis. But by the grace of God, from them saying that I would probably never walk again, and from him touching my back and getting me up, uh, I give all praises to him for that. It was a miracle, and I thank him for it. What was it like when that process was happening? What was going through your mind when you'd been in the wheelchair and all of a sudden you thought maybe you could get up? Well, it was like uh, something that you could never imagine unless you've been in that situation. Never thought that I could understand why uh, people would take their own life, yeah. but the pain was so excruciating. I told my wife one day, I said, listen, I think I'm just going to take the pistol and shoot myself in the back. I cannot deal with it yeah. any longer, you know, and uh, to the point to where, you know, she said, well, just pray, just pray. I, I just laid in, in the recliner and prayed and prayed and prayed. It seemed like it was for 21 days straight. I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And all of a sudden I had to go back to the doctor in, in Greenville and the disc, they said, the disc that was shown on the on the film uh, where it was crumbled, uh, somehow the same disc after I went back showed no crumbling. It only showed arthritis. Now, if you believe in miracles and you believe that God still performs miracles, yeah. you look in at one. And so I was still in pain. So I told her, I said, when we get home, you get my, I'm gonna get my sons, and y'all gonna help me get on this walk, and I'm gonna walk around the house. Okay. And she said, I know you want to do it, but, you know, just, you can't do that. I said, oh, yes, I am. I said, I'm going to take that as a message from God. So what I did is when they got me back home from Greenville from the pain clinic, they got me out of the vehicle, gave me my walker, and I started easing around the house. And from that, I came to not being able to walk at all to now I walk five miles three days a week. Oh, only nice. by the grace of God. <laughs> But you still got the pain. I still got the pain. Still got the pain. There's nothing severe to uh, what it was. Yeah. But I, I have to get up 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, take a pain pill, let my recliner all the way back, and just sit there for a minute and let my back stretch out and let the pain medicine take its course. And then I get up and walk a little, little, little by little, little by little, and then ease to the Y, get in a heated pool, wow. and go from there. As a result of that, when you 
got up out of the recliner, when you were able to put the walker aside and you were able to walk on your own, are, are you thinking at this point that th there's something else for me to do? Yes, because uh, from not being able to uh, pastor a church uh, or do what I was always doing, I ended up thinking, God, what do you have for me to do? And, and I was just thinking about my process and position that I was in, not being able to do anything for myself. And I wanted to help others who couldn't help themselves. Mm -hmm. So I developed this uh, nonprofit organization. I wanted to tackle the streets. So what other way to tackle the streets? I named my organization Tackling the Streets, and I do the housing repair program through that organization for senior citizens, low income through the state housing program. And I also thought about the kids who are handicapped, disabled, and misunderstood with autism. And I know it was a very need, and I know it was a lot. So I felt compassion to do what I could to help these individuals out. Getting back, tell me what you do for the seniors. Well, for the senior citizens, what we do is uh, we go and access their house. Uh, some of the senior citizens, uh, heat and air go out. They can't afford, cannot afford to pay for it to be fixed. And through the state program, we... Uh, get that done through the general contractors and, and do all the paperwork and the state pays that back to the contractor and give Tackling the Streets a sponsor fee for finding those individuals and, and getting it done for them. What are, besides air conditioning, like ramps? We do ramps. Uh, certain houses, uh, we can do up to $20,000 worth of work in a house. Uh, the contractors are doing a house now down in Star. Uh, we've done several houses. Uh, and what they do, they go in, they remodel their bathroom, okay. remodel their kitchen, uh, remodel the floors, put new vinyl down, new carpet down, and put new roofs on. And these individuals who are low income and otherwise have no means of support to do yeah. it themselves, they get $20,000 worth of work done to their house, and they don't have to pay a dime. And what's it got to be like when that job's done for that the people living there? Oh, they're they are tickled to death. Right. They're, they're happy. Uh, something that they didn't think that they would be able to get done. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't afford to pay it. And then, you know, uh, they want to know, what, what can I do? What can I do to thank you? Just, just say thank you. All yeah. you can do is just say thank <laughs> you. I'm happy that I'm able to be able to get out and to find you all, right. uh, even though you call in, but to assess your needs and and to get it done, just to see that accomplishment uh, is a happy feeling for me. It's got to be. Knowing that I can help someone else. Our guest this morning is Emmanuel Donaldson. He is founder of Tackling the Streets, and when we come back, we're gonna continue chatting with him. Welcome back to Conversations with Paul Brown. Emmanuel Donaldson is our guest this morning. Next week, you've got a, a special camp that you've put together. It's the first time we've done this in the Anderson area. Yes. How did the idea originate? Well, the idea originated uh, by seeing uh, other kids and kids react and hearing how the need is to help kids with autism and it is a growing trend in our country. And I, I realized that it wasn't anything done much in this area. True, we have the Special Olympics, right. but as far as the autism and, and disability needs, uh, there is not a summer program or a camp that these individuals can go to to enjoy themselves for a whole week and give themselves a, a outlook differently on, on, on life, and not only that, give their parents and their guardians a rest period. Right, a break. A break. Uh, so, you know, to be able to help them do that and to know that uh, we can help them is, is an intriguing feeling. That was the idea. How did you begin to formulate it? Well, I thought about it, and, and like always, I always pray over it, and, uh, and I didn't have no, no financial funds uh, to find a location. So I, uh, 
I was led to go to Glenn Brill, who I dealt with in the past uh, on certain instances. I went to him. He's with Anderson County. With the Anderson County. Right. And uh, he was tickled to death about it. And uh, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do whatever I can so uh, to help you. He got with, with his people at the county. And uh, they come up with to allow us to use the facility at the Civic Center. And not only that, they're, they're partnering, sponsoring, help promoting and getting people out because within the county, I, I live in this county, they live in this county, and to know that we're going to bring something to this county and uh, to help these individuals out, his only request is for me to promise him that it won't be this only year, that we'll do it next year and wow. the next year and the next yeah. year uh, because he know of the need and was tickled about it, yeah. and, and the whole county board is excited about it, and they've been in partnership with it. Who can come, and what are some of the things you're going to do during the week-long activities? Well, the week-long activities, uh, first of all, individuals between age of 5 to 25 with autism and special needs, we have a registered nurse that will be on site. Ambulance service will be on site. So we have qualified staff teachers who are out of the school system who, who are on vacation and out for the summer. They are there volunteering. So we do need more volunteers okay. uh, because uh, we don't know the outpouring of people that will show up at the moment, but I'm told to be prepared for in excess of 100 people. Wow. The Anderson County School District 5 will be uh, delivering and sponsoring the meals for the program for the breakfast and the lunch. And uh, we have other sponsors who are contributing uh, to help with the program. What are you going to be doing that's fun for these kids? Well, Coach Cornelius Bonner, uh, who did some coaching and still do coaching in this area, he deals with the autism kids on West Point, on, over on 81, the, the school over there. He's in charge of all of the activities. So that there will be uh, different bounce rides, uh, different uh, board games, different uh, ball games, soccer. Him and his partnership in that area will be putting all the activities together. So it will be a well diverse uh, particular type activities for the, each day. So they will not get bored. <laughs> <laughs> and the day begins when and ends when? It's June the 13th through the 17th, 8 to 4. That's Monday through Friday. And the families will have to drop off and pick up the folks that are participating. The families will have to drop off and pick up. The registration uh, for this is only $25. And the week cost for the whole camp week is only $150. Now that includes your packet, your uh, your T-shirt, and everything else for the week. All your activities, the meals, extra meals in the afternoon, and everything, snacks, all that will be provided. But that includes everything. Being the first year, this is kind of going to be a trial and error. Yes. And. Uh, the fact that the county has stepped up uh, has got to make you feel good. Very much so, very much so. And for them to step up and everybody that is on the county uh, administration team that I have met, including some of the county councilmen, uh, everybody is, is happy, they're elated, they're very excited. And you know, and they was like, you know, this is something that this county has been needed. and. To be able to partner with this and to take it to higher heights is something that they're very interested in. I am so as well. Uh, you can tell. The, the fee for the whole week is $150. Yes. For those families that can't afford that, how can we help them? Well, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. There are some scholarships available and we do have some sponsors. So if you cannot afford to pay the whole fee, just come, sign up, register, and we will do whatever we can to help you. We are sure that we will not turn anyone away. We are sure that we have enough sponsorship for those who cannot afford to pay the whole thing. We have enough sponsorships in this area and from donors who will help 
get the rest of those uh, individuals in. When you started this, have you been surprised at how well it's been received, the idea? Yes. Yes. I, I felt in my heart that it would be received real good, but I didn't think that it would be received overwhelmed by everybody that I have talked to and come in contact with. How big a problem is this in Anderson, the, the, the autism and the special needs people that you come in contact with? It is a very big problem. We have a lot of individuals who, there are certain steps and certain levels of autism, and some individuals' levels are higher and more acute than others okay. to the point to where you wouldn't know that these individuals have autism unless you assess them and dealt with them. But it is a growing trend that is growing more and more rapidly in this area. All the schools have individuals in the school system with autism and special needs. I haven't found a school yet that doesn't have them. And they're addressing those specific needs. And they are addressing those specific needs. They have very intelligent and compassionate teachers who are there with them, <coughs> excuse me, on a daily basis. And, and like I say, some of those teachers will be with us for the camp. But they are assessing those uh, individuals as best as they can. And they are compassionate with them, I found that to be. For the parents and the caregivers of these individuals, this may be like manna from heaven. Yes, yes, yes. So school is out. Uh, now I got a whole week that I got to put something together all of a sudden, uh, and there's no activities for them yeah. to do. And now that they realize a whole week activity uh, for my child to go, and wow, it's, it's, it's like manna from heaven because you have other individuals with, with not a special need or autism uh, capabilities. They have access to camps. Yeah, right. Uh, that's rapidly, correct. Yeah. But these individuals with autism and special needs never had this to happen. And for this to be here in Anderson County, it is a God sent for. Them. It's got to be personally rewarding for you, especially coming out of the background that you did. I mean, for all those years being confined yes. to a house yes. and a recliner yes. and then now you're walking around. Yes. I yes. would think that you can identify with these people more than somebody who hasn't experienced that. Very much so. Very much so. Uh, knowing the pain, knowing the mental state, knowing the physical state, uh, only those who have been there where I've been could understand and have the compassion to the extent to come from where I've come to realize that these individuals are going through something with their mental state and their physical state that they cannot shake. And for me to come from where I've come from, to be blessed from there to now, uh, it is a overwhelmed joy to be able to do whatever I can to help them out. As they say, you can talk to talk and walk the walk because you've been there. I've been there. I have been there. Oh, how well have I been there. <laughs> To be in a point to where uh, your wife would have to bathe you in the bed yeah. for weeks at a time because you cannot bend to do anything and where your kids and your wife would have to help change your clothing, put you in a vehicle to take you to the doctor, yeah. just to ride you out on the side of a ball field just so you can see some activities. You know, now you're able with medication and by, by the grace of God just to go and maneuver and do it on your own, it, it, is, it is unbelievable the words that can't really explain, can't explain. As you can see now, I, I get overwhelmed just by talking about where I come from. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, Emmanuel Donaldson, for sharing your story with us. And again, if you have anybody that uh, fits this need, tackling the streets, their summer uh, camp for one week at the Civic Center of Anderson, we want to thank you for sharing your story. We want to thank everybody for tuning in and invite you to be back with us next week, same time, for another edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care, everybody. Thank you.